up y'all it's your boy tevin jameer back at it again with another episode of the hate it or love it podcast and man it's been a long time since i said that but y'all know i've been really busy with the movie and you guys are finally getting new episodes because i mean as you guys could probably tell i have finally finished the movie it's in its final form i already started sending it to festivals and stuff like that me and my friend seth um We're already planning like a double feature like screening for both of our movies next year. So like, yeah, I'm basically about to go all in with this movie. But hey, now that the movie is done, I'll be back to doing the podcast. I had a few people hit me up saying that they want to get on. So, you know, we're going to have guests on. We, you know, we're going to do a lot of big things next year. But look, the time ain't the focus on the next year right now, or I guess somewhat it is, but Today, as you guys can see in the title, it's all about my top songs are really my Apple Rewind for 2023. As y'all know, I'm a big music and film fan. Like, I know film is my number one love, but I would say music is like my second favorite type of art form. And I have talked about music a lot on this podcast, so it's only right that I go through my replay I said rewind, but it's only right that I go through my replay for 2023. And yeah, I feel like this is going to be a fun thing to do. I think I did it last year, but this time I'm going to like dedicate a full episode to this. Last year, I kind of just stuffed like all of the end of year stuff in one episode. But I'm like, you know what? There's enough here to where I can probably do like full episodes for my end of year stuff. So this is basically how we're going to do it for these next few weeks of December and stuff like that. Um... This episode, of course, as you guys can see, I'm going to go through my Apple replay. The next episode that I'll be putting out, and I don't know if I'm going to wait like a week or two, but most likely next week, I am going to do my top films of the year. Basically, if you guys have been keeping up with my letterbox, then you'll already know what is my favorite rankings and like, you know, for films and stuff like that. But I'll be going over the films next week. And then the week after that, Usually I like to do like an end of year post every year where I like compile like 10 photos and either they're photos of my favorite moments of the year or just notable things or just things that I liked from this year. And I think I'll reserve the last episode of this year for that one. So basically just telling y'all like my top 10 moments, but then also I'll also be going over my goals that I had for this year and I haven't looked at the goals since I literally made them, so we're going to see if I actually fulfilled like any of my goals, which, to be honest, I don't think I really fulfilled a lot, but I did fulfill what I would consider the most important one, but we're going to save that for the last episode of the year. Now, enough talking, man. Let's get to, you know my Spotify or my Apple replay because I, you know, obviously Spotify is more popular. So my mind automatically thinks Spotify, but let's get to my Apple replay. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is first, I'm going to go over the artists that like, you know, my top 15 artists, then I'm going to go through my top songs and then I'm going to end it off with my top albums. And then basically somewhat give like a review of 2023's music in general. So, all right, y'all, let's, let's, let's stop. Let's get to it. And you guys can also see on the screen what my stats are, but I'm still going to read it as if like, you know, I haven't said it yet. So it says that I've listened to 758 total artists in 2023. So who are my top 15 at number 15? We have Nipsey hustle. Now, truth be told, I'm not really a Nipsey hustle fan. But the reason that he's up here is just because, well, I should say I'm more of a fan of his personality, less of his music. But the reason that uh, he's up here on this list and why he's this high is because, you know, he put out so many projects and I was like, you know what? Let me actually sit down and listen to like most of his projects because I have heard projects from him before. Definitely Victory Lap. But I was like, let me listen to actually like some of his mixtapes. So there was a good moment where I I was listening to most of his work. I never finished listening to everything, but there's a good like point in the year where I was like steady listening to a bunch of projects from him. And that's basically the result of this, though. I will say that also the other reason why it's up here is because 
you know, Nipsey Hussle, he wasn't the greatest rapper to me. And his music wasn't really like, like I will say majority of his music was good, but there was a lot of like songs I did not rock with, but I will say that the songs that hit definitely hit like keys to the city. Not the one for, not the one from a uh, victory lap, but like the mixtape version keys to the city. That song is good. Rich roll was good. Um, there was like another song like tears cry or gun cry or something like that like yeah he just had a lot of great songs where like you know i'm like look i stopped listening like i stopped going through his discography but i still go back to those songs to these days i mean this day especially rich roll oh early mornings and late nights like that was basically a remix of uh pretty ricky's um damn it was i forget Oh, on the hotline. It was it was a remix of Pretty Ricky's on the hotline. And if you guys know me, y'all know that R and B is my favorite genre and I really love Pretty Ricky's music back in the day. So hearing him do a remix of that was really crazy. Like Nipsey Hustle really just got on here because I was going through his discography, but as I was going through, I did find a lot of songs that I rocked with and that I stayed listening to through the years. So yeah. That's why Nipsey Hustle is fifteen. Number 14, I have King George. King George is not known, but all right, he's been getting a little bit of buzz, more like with the old heads. King George is basically like a R&B singer that has a lot of country elements into his music. Um, late last year, me and my cousin Sanir, who I think I had on the podcast, like just cameo for a little bit, he was like listening to some like r&b slash country music he was listening to like one artist that was in that realm and then we started getting introduced to like other artists like king george and r&b poo and yeah king george he really i feel like out of all the artists that we kind of listen to in that realm that makes like half country half r&b music i feel like king george is the better are the best artists to do that mixture because like now look R&B Poo is on my top 15 list but I will explain this when I'll I'll explain his situation when I get to him but as far as like the R&B country mixture lane yeah um King George is the best to me and the crazy thing is he doesn't even have a full project out he only has like a few singles but those few singles were really good especially keep on rolling but personally my favorite is don't let me be blind so King George is really up here just because he genuinely makes good music that I like to go back to especially since I am more of an R&B head than like a hip hop head and stuff like that so yeah King George number 14 and number 13 we have Trey Songs and I'm gonna be honest with y'all I don't know how he got this high oh wait no I do I was going through um Trey Songs early discography um I I heard the second half of his discography like Trigger and and um was Panty Drop a album or was that just the song of it? I don't remember. But he had a lot of albums that I listened to, but I never heard his first few albums and that's why he's up this high on this list. I mean, besides that, look, personal issues that he got going on aside, he's not really an artist where his personal life really affects his art like that. So I don't try to focus on that. I really just listen to him for entertainment. If he did what he did, he's a horrible person, but at least his music was good. Um, Trey Songs, yeah, he's really only up here because, I mean, I genuinely do like his music, but for real, the main reason he's up there up there is because I have been trying to go through his discography just like I did with Nipsey Hussle. Um, number 12, 495 Minutes. We got Lil Tecca and truth be told, Lil Tecca is just there just because I fuck with Lil Tecca's music like very heavy. Like a lot of people stopped messing with Tecca after his first mixtape dropped. And even when I talk to the people today about like Tecca, they're always like, bro, you still listen to him? Like he wasn't popping since like 2019. But nah, like, you know, ever since I heard um, We Love You Tecca 1 and then I heard his Virgo World album, I think that's what it was called, like Virgo World, whatever his first album was, like, yeah, 
Tekka is one of them ones. Like, you know, people can fall off of him, but he really made he really makes good music. And whether like people still listen to him or not, like, yeah. He makes really good music. Even this year, Tech the Album was a really good album. It's lower on his discography for me. Like, I really rather listen to his older projects. But Tech the Album was really good, and it had a lot of songs that I go back to. So, yeah, Tech is just really on here just because I really love Lil Tech's music. Um, number 11, now this is for the old heads, Jaheem. Jaheem is always going to be on my top 15 list just because I think I have a similar story like how most people do like your music taste really comes from your parents and basically when I was younger any vacation any car trip we ever been on Jaheem is always in rotation like I know my mom is probably listening to the podcast so she'll tell y'all in the comments but Jaheem is always in rotation so yeah, my parents definitely influenced my love for music. They definitely influenced like me loving R&B more than hip hop. And Jaheem is just, you know, I grew up on his music, so I'm always going to listen to him. Like, you know, it really is very nostalgic for me. But also Jaheem, you know, he makes a lot of those smooth R&B love joints that I love. So Jaheem is always going to be in my top 15. His his position varies throughout the years, but he is always going to be on my top 15 list just because he always made like great music. I mean, okay, I'm not going to say always made because his recent albums, he does the whole long time R&B artist thing where like now they try to sound new age or they try to sound like you know, younger and stuff. I hate when he tries to sound younger. I love it when he does his old head music. Like, I want to listen to old head music, bro. Like, stay on your old head wave. So, yeah, Jaheem at number 11. At number 10, we have PNB Rock, which PNB Rock, I think ever since I really started getting into his music back in high school, like, I, he's always in my top 15 list somewhere, just like Jaheem. Like, basically, I always tell people that PNB Rock is one of, is going to be one of those artists. And I said this before he died, too. Um, I, I always said that he's going to be one of those artists that I'm going to play his song in the car to my kids. And I'm going to be like, what y'all know about that PNB Rock? Like, yeah, PNB Rock, like... I just loved his music, especially like, you know, more of the recent songs that he's been putting out, you know, before he died, especially Lost You to the Game. I already said, like, on this channel that that was my favorite song from him. So, yeah, PNB Rock, of course, number 10. I have him at 544 minutes, and you already know, RIP Rock, you know, we're going to keep his name alive. But at number nine, like I said, with King George. We got R&B Poo. Now, here's the difference. I know R&B Poo is ranked higher than King George, and I said King George is better at this country R&B music thing. The only reason that I have R&B Poo over King George, well, there's two reasons. One, R&B Poo actually has like a full body of work. He actually has a project out. So, obviously, listening to a project opposed to singles, you're going to wind up listening to it more. So, yeah, that's one reason R&B Poo is over King George. The second reason is one thing about me is whether a song is bad or not, if it makes me laugh, I instantly enjoy it. Like, you know, R&B Poo... Not that he doesn't make serious music, but sometimes his music can come off somewhat like a joke. And I don't mean this in a bad way. Like, you know, or okay, it might actually be a bad thing, but like, I don't mean it with any like ill will because I do think he makes genuinely good music. But like, when I play it to other people, they laugh. Like, they don't, they're not enjoying it because it's good music to them. They're enjoying it because they find it funny. And while I did find it funny at first, like I did ultimately listen to the project and I was like, you know, he has potential to be a really good artist, but people just don't see him as a serious artist. He comes off more as a joke. And even though I started to see him more as a serious artist, I do have to admit that it does still come off a little jokey still like, you know, you make good music, but what does it mean when nobody's really taking you seriously? And even though I take you seriously, there's still that part of me that still sees you as a joke. Like, I hope y'all get what I mean. I don't want to sound like mean to him because I genuinely think he is a good artist, but 
I think it's best said like this. I said this to my cousin Sonia. I was like, the reason that King George is ultimately going to do better than R&B Poo, I mean, unless R&B Poo changes things up, but if they're both as they are right now, I told him that the reason that that King George is going to see more success is because King George, yes, he's mixing that country. He's mixing the country just like R&B Poo does. But the difference is when R&B Poo does it, 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 that's the part that makes people laugh. That's the part that makes people see him as a joke. But when King George does it, like he does it in a very smooth way to where it's like, you can still somewhat take it seriously or not even somewhat like people take King George seriously. So yeah, I don't, I didn't want to, you know, shit on R&B poo. Cause I really do think he makes good music, but at the same time, if he really does want to be serious with this music stuff and he's not really that big of an artist either. So, and I mean, I'm not a big artist either from the little bit that I made music, but it's like, you know, I'm still not ignorant to what will blow you up. And at the same time, army poo, you need to, you need to start making people see you seriously. And that's the main thing that will help you blow up if you are listening to this that's the main thing that will help you blow up in the future because every time i listen to it with other people they don't take you seriously i take you seriously but other people don't and it's kind of a shame because you really did put out a nice project but like i said in the future you got to try to get people to take you more seriously and number eight and i couldn't believe this when i saw this at number eight we have nba young boy now let me keep my let me keep my my criticisms low because I see how he low key be getting in his feelings when people criticize his music. Actually, to be to be for real though, I don't really have any much bad things to say about NBA YoungBoy. I mean, okay, the reason I, I'll start with this: the reason he's at number eight is just the same reason as Nipsey Hussle. Like I I was going through his discography; he has a lot of damn albums mixtapes if you go through nba Youngboy's discography you don't even have to try you don't even have to re-listen to songs he's automatically going to be on your top 15 like that's how much he puts out so much music so me trying to go through his discography which at some point i gave up i mean i'm gonna pick back up later but at some point i just gave up because it's like damn they're like you put, you really put out so much music that even me binging your music i'm kind of getting tired like I'm I'm kind of getting tired of like trying to go through your album. So yeah, like R&B Poo, I mean I'm still on R&B Poo. NBA Youngboy, he doesn't make bad music, but here's my real criticism with him. He most of his projects do not stand out from each other. That's my only real criticism about NBA Youngboy. He drops so much music. He drops so much content. And none of his projects really feel that different. Like, he, you know how, like, a lot of artists, they'll drop mixtapes or what they call mixtapes nowadays, but they're really albums. But they'll drop mixtapes, but you can somewhat feel a difference between a mixtape and an artist when it comes to certain artists. With NBA Youngboy, there is certain projects where it has a mixtape feel. Like, one of the albums from him that definitely do feel like an album is Top. Like, Top definitely felt like an album. When I listen to that, I'm like, all right, this is something different. This feels very different from a ai young boy or uh until well until death called my name was his first album so i can't really use that as an example but y'all get what i mean he drops so much music and there's certain points where it does feel different from each other like some will have a different feel he'll go for a different style with a certain one but to be honest majority of the ones i listened to all felt the same like if they were just all one big album it wouldn't i wouldn't have notice i really wouldn't have notice but i will definitely say since i have gone through pretty much half of his discography at this point i will say that my favorite project from him is definitely ai young boy 2 like i don't know what, and even before ai young boy 2 came out like i heard the first ai young boy and i'm like yo this is definitely like his best project like i don't know what it is when he's making this ai series but his rapping is just different when he decides to make that series like it's crazy so yeah NBA young boy for the most part it's really just because he has so much music but I also got to give credit where it's due. Just like with Nipsey Hussle, when I found a song that I love, 
I kept banging it. Like one of my favorite songs from this year was actually from him. I mean, he didn't drop it this year, but like one of the songs that I heard for the first time this year that I couldn't stop replying was his song Doors Up with Rich the Kid. Like I love Doors Up. Like that's probably like top five favorite young boy song. Like Doors Up is really a banger. So yeah, um, NBA Young Boy, definitely it. Then at number seven, we have Quabs coming in at 596 minutes. And Quabs is basically just another case like Jaheem. Not that my parents listened to him, but he's, if you had to ask me, what, who is my favorite R&B artist of this generation? I'm going to say Quabs. And it's really crazy for me to say that because this boy only has one album and a few EPs. Quab's really been in my top 15 since I first listened to him off of just one album. And it kills me that he's not making another album. Well, I don't really know if he's making it, but like he hasn't indicated to making a second album. And he's kind of slowly getting back into music because he basically like strained his voice very badly to the point where he couldn't even perform. So these last few years, he has been dropping stuff here and there. But for the most part, he is just trying to get his vocals back together after, you know, working it really hardly, like at the beginning of his career. So, yeah, um, Quabs. I keep trying to recommend him to people, but nobody ever listens to me. In my opinion, Quabs really is the best musical artist of this generation, or R&B artist of this generation. Like, Chris Brown, I love Chris Brown's music. I love The Weeknd. I love Beyonce. I love so many R&B singers, but I, genuine, I genuinely believe that Quabs is the best out of all of them off of one album. Now, this isn't necessarily me saying that his one album is better, but I'm saying that if he was more consistent and he put out more music, I definitely feel like Quabs would be a bigger artist and he would be in real conversations about being the top of this R&B generation. Like, it kills me that, I mean, partly I know it's because his voice got strained, so he really do need to, like, rest and stuff. And, you know, it, and also he's been putting in a lot of work when he first came out, so it is only right that he can take his time, but at the the same time it's like bruh you haven't dropped since 2015 or you haven't dropped a full body of work since 2015 it's about to be 10 years since your first album can we get something like Kendrick Lamar fans thought that they waited Frank Ocean fans thought that they waited I wasn't on Quabs when he first came out into, or when he first dropped his album in 2015 I didn't really listen to him until 2017 so yeah Basically, I have been waiting almost like eight years at this point. It's about it, it, like in four years, it's going to be 10 years since I've been waiting, but it's going on eight. And I'm just like, man, I'm like, man, bro, I, I wish I wish Quabs would just hurry up and put out another album. But yeah. Quabs is, I feel like he would be, you know, on top if he did put out more music, but you know, it is what it is. And, you know, personally me, I'm someone that also do care about the artists that I like. So, well, that is if they have good personalities and Quabs does have a good personality. So, you know, whenever the time, whenever he feels like it's ready, I'll be waiting for him. And yeah, that was Quabs at number seven. I'm going to always say this. If you did not ever listen to Quabs music, please listen to it. I keep recommending it to people. They don't ever listen to it. But like somebody, please, someday, just go listen to Quabs. You're not going to regret it. So yeah. Um, at number six, we have The Weeknd. Weeknd is really just up here because, you know, I love a lot of his music. He is basically one of my favorite R&B artists of this generation. So, of course, I'm going to listen to him a lot. Um, part of it is me listening to a lot of his albums. Like, my favorite album from um, Weekend is Beauty Behind the Madness. That is easily my favorite album from him. And I don't think he's ever going to top that. Like, that's how amazing that album is. I even think it's better than the trilogy. And I know that's a very hot take. But I think Beauty Behind the Madness is better than trilogy. So, you know. Yeah, um, 
BB Behind the Madness, Starboy, even his last album, Dawn FM. I still like that. I still listen to Trilogy like it's new. So basically, Weekend is basically just up here just because I love his music. So yeah. At number five, always in my top five somewhere, Chris Brown at 884 minutes. So yeah, Chris Brown, just like Weekend, got a lot of songs that I love and I'm always going to listen to him. Number four, this one shocked me because usually Drake is always in my top 15, but he's never this high. So honestly, I don't even know how to explain like how he got this high. But at a hundred, I mean, at a thousand and seventeen minutes, we have Drake. I like I said, I don't I don't know how Drake got this high. I really don't. But, you know, I do like Drake's music a lot. He is always in my top 15, but it's crazy that he's really up here. And truth be told. I did see a video where Sean C was talking about this, how Drake always puts out like long behind projects. And I do, when I listen to Drake, sometimes I do actually go back to listen to his full projects. And with them always being long, I guess the time really does always add up. Cause like, you know, but this year, I think the albums that I really went to go listen to from Drake over and over was really, if you're reading this, cause I'm always listening to that, um, more life, which is very underrated of course, for all the dogs when that first came out. And then I think I also listened to Nothing Was the Same. So, like, yeah, I had a few albums from Drake that I went back and listened to. So that probably is why it adds up. At number three, we have Leon Thomas, or as y'all may know him as Andre from Victorious. Yeah. He finally dropped his first debut album, uh, Electric Dusk electronic dust or electric dust yeah electric dust he dropped it this summer and boy is that a r&b fucking masterpiece like when when i say that he might be one of the best r&b like i know he just dropped one album but he really is somebody that's keeping r&b spirit alive like his music is so damn good i'm not even trying to dicky right now but like Electric Dusk really is a great album. And then, okay, he didn't write Snooze for SZA, but the fact that he actually played a part in Snooze, which is like one of the biggest songs of the year, and then you have an album like this, like, bro, I see nothing but great things for Leon Thomas. And I've been saying that since the Victorious days. Like, back on Victorious, he always had the best songs to me. Like, um... Everybody, of course, everybody knows song to you, but my favorite song from him from the victorious days was 365 days. And it's great to see that he's still gaining success even way past that. And it's good to see that he's finally doing his main passion. Like not to say that he's not into acting because he did say that he really do want to like get into acting more like he used to. But it really is nice to see him really get into his bag with this music stuff because he has been producing and songwriting for a lot of artists these past few years. Apparently, he also worked with Drake, as he said, but this album really shows that like all right enough helping other artists out it's time for you to focus on your career because you are going in with this music shit like leon thomas really made an amazing album if you guys have not heard electric dusk please go listen to it it definitely gives off like a old school r&b feel with a little bit of newness to it but he definitely is keeping the spirit of r&b alive and number two, another one that's always in my top five somewhere, Bobby Valentino. I always said that Bobby V, or I got to say Bobby V, because if you guys have been longtime fans and you know what happened the last time I said Bobby Valentino, but Bobby V, um, he, he hasn't it's sad because he hasn't had as much success as I believe that he should have had, but if you guys still listen to him, then you know that he still be making those nice behind R&B songs that, you know, he was making back in the 2000s. It's so sad that he fell off, though, or it fell off mainstream wise, because to be honest, like he really did make so many great albums and made a lot of great music. Like I said, same thing with Jaheim. He's he does put out some music where he's trying to appeal more to the younger crowd. Kind of blows my shit, but for the most part, he is still putting out a lot of great bodies of works. And to be honest, 
he's really up here just because he's always up here, but really just because he makes such great music. Like he is very underrated. So if you guys haven't taken a, taken a look at Bobby's like discography, please go listen to that. Please stop fucking just only listening to slow down and tell me and beep. Like I'm tired of hearing the same songs from Bobby V when people bring him up like, Oh, slow down. Tell me beep anonymous. I'm like, he has made so many albums albums he has had so many hits can we please stop talking about these same ones because truth be told tell me and 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 um slow down ain't even top 10 songs from him if you ask me it ain't even top 10 they're amazing songs don't get me wrong there's a reason they're popular and why they're still talked about today but come on bro they're not even top 10 in his discography like come on and then number one if you guys really know me, this shouldn't be no surprise. Number one, Rod Wave. Now, that didn't shock me that he was my number one. What did shock me is that he came out to 5,077 minutes. Bro. Bro. If you look at everybody else, they're in the hundreds or, or like 1,000s. Bobby, I mean, Rod Wave is at 5,000 minutes that is crazy that is that is wild i didn't think i listened to rod wave that much but oh boy well okay let me be real with myself i knew i listened to rod wave that much but that much nah that's wild he basically took up so many of my minutes this year it's crazy but yeah so rod wave 5,077 minutes. That is crazy. And he came up at the number one spot. So, yeah, those are my top 15 artists. For albums, I'm not going to... Or next, I'm moving on to songs. For songs, I'm not going to take as long as I did with the artists just because, you know, it's kind of more straightforward. At number 15, we have Tombstone by Rod Wave. 42 plays. It, it, okay, if I come off like a depressed person, because a lot of people say that Rod Wave's music is depressed. Well, I do have a depression, but I mean, if I do come off very depressed because of my music taste, then... But here's the thing, though. Here's the crazy thing. When I listen to sad music or like music that people perceive as sad, I'm not even really sad listening to it or and it doesn't really make me sad. I'm actually like singing it like with my heart out like like it's a banger or something. That's but that's always been me. Even before I've been diagnosed with depression, like that's always been me. Like I'm I'm the type of person that can listen to a sad song and blast that like it's a banger. Like I don't begin sad to songs a lot of times. So even though these are sad songs on my tops, I'm really not sad and crying when I'm listening to them. I'm like, I'm banging them and like, I'm singing them like, like this is like an upbeat, like DJ Mustard type song. Like that's how I'd be in my car singing these songs. But all right. Uh, number 15, Tombstone, which is genuinely a sad Rod Wave song. Like when people say that Rod Wave's music is too sad, like I'd be saying like, all right, it's not even as sad as y'all be trying to make it. But Tombstone is actually that damn sad. So how this is 15 for me? I don't know. Maybe I need to get checked out. Um, 14 is Heart for Sale. Like I said, I wasn't sad, but I definitely feel the lyrics to this song. So that's probably why. Same with Tombstone. Actually, let me just put it like this going forward. Rod Wave's music, I said it before on this podcast. If you want to know how my mind works, if you want to know how I genuinely feel about things, and I'm not even trying to dicky, like... This man literally says like all the words and thoughts that I have in my mind. So if you literally want to know how I feel about love, if you want to know how I feel about like life and stuff like that, literally just listen to a Rod Wave project and you pretty much heard my thoughts and opinions on life pretty much. So Tombstone, Heart for Sale, that's another song like Tombstone and Heart for Sale are really songs that I feel like personally like those words definitely feel like how I feel dark clouds at number 13. That's another song that, you know, I feel like that no weakness for a long time. You know, I've been somebody that says, man, I don't need love. Love is for the weak. Like, 
Yeah, so that song is another one that I feel. Breaking Point at number 11 from Leon Thomas. That one is... That one is just more of like a old school R and B. Like I feel like that song could have came out in the nineties or the two or early two thousands. Like it's just a slow R and B joint. Like it's just smooth. That's why I really liked it a lot and listened to it a lot. Pray for love, PTSD, proud of me, sky priority, brace face. Like I said, all Rod Wave songs that I felt. All songs that that reflected how I was feeling, especially more of the love songs like Brace Face is more of a love song. There is nothing really too sad about it. I mean, if y'all knew, if y'all know, y'all know, especially at the beginning of this year, I did have a girlfriend. She never like wanted me to post her. And it's not because she was on no ho stuff like some people might automatically think. No, it was something completely dif- different. But at the very end somewhat beginning of this year i had a girlfriend so i was definitely more in a more happy lovey-dovey phase which is why brace face is like up there but yeah so then at number five you got ain't mad at you like i said i'm i'm a big r&b person big r&b person and on this song he sampled one of my favorite r&b songs ever must be nice by life jennings so at number five he 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 basically sampled that while also like interpolating tupac lyrics and he made a song called ain't mad at you and yeah really just because he implemented a lot of like nostalgic things for me like must be nice and then implemented things from tupac like that's why i love that song so much at number four no secrets from b love B Love is very underrated to me when it comes to like the New York rap scene. Like I always like love his music whenever he does drop. So yeah, No Secrets was definitely up there. And he also sampled another R&B song that I love, Tink's Um Treat Me Like Somebody. So yeah, a lot basically what I've always said is that R&B is my favorite genre. A lot of this falls back to R&B. Even if it's a rap song, I love it because it, of an R&B influence or R&B like sample like it all just goes back to that number three we have break my heart by Rod Wave which I said is my all-time favorite Rod Wave song so yeah that one I love that number two we have crash and burn from Leon Thomas that was really that was really my shit when I first started getting into his like his album crash and burn was really my shit and then at number one we have love jones which is like one of the smoothest r&b songs i heard in a cool minute like if you really want to hear like a smooth r&b joint that is it like even when me and my dad went to the eagles game this year over the summer i i was playing this on our way back to his place and he was like wait who is this like now okay i i'm gonna say you make some good music if you if you got my dad asking like who is this because my dad never like i never heard my dad really listen to anything that i think was horrible like anytime he listens to music i always like the songs that he's playing so like i would say my dad has good music taste so if he's asking who you are just know you made good music right there and he was asking when um when love jones was playing and i told him who it was and he was like dang that boy can really sing like i knew he could sing from victorious but that boy can sing like yeah like i said if my dad love you then you already know you're a good artist so number one was love jones it like like i keep saying bro if you guys haven't listened to electric dusk please go check that out like really great album But speaking of albums, that's the last one we're going to get into for this year, or that's the last list we're going to get into in this episode. And for some reason, it didn't show me my top 15 albums. It started at 14, so that's kind of weird. I don't know what my 15th album is, but hey, Um, I listened to 454 total albums. These are the top 14. At number 14, we have Hunger Games 2 from Rod Wave. A lot of great songs on there. Um, I would probably say like my favorite song on there is Changing On Me is definitely my number one. Um, Thug Love, 
our thugs need love. Like it's it's one of it's one of those names, but that's like my second song on there. Um, boom, where you been? Like those are a lot of songs that I really love from there. Um, thirteen, Bobby V, disturbing the peace. Basically, his first album. Um, the whole album is basically good. Like I can't really name too much. I guess I guess I could say the main ones that I really love is Want You to Know Me, um, My Angel, and Slow Down. Not the single version of Slow Down, but if you listen to the full album, he has a bonus track called Slow Down. And I don't know if this was like a remix. I don't know if this was like, you know, the original version of Slow Down before it became what we know it as, but that version I do think is better than, you know, the single version. But that one is more of a like a smooth, like baby making type song. So yeah. The the original song was more like a a hey girl, let me holla at you type two thousand song, while the the album cut version is like, yeah, it's a baby making song. Like, yeah. I won't tell y'all my activities to that song, but <laughs> um number twelve. We have R&B, R&B Poo's um, mixtape, the Prince of Trail Ride Blues. Um, like I said, it was a good project, but like I said, play it around other people, they laugh too much. Number 11, you got Quab's Love, Love and War. And that's another project I would say, if you want to know how I feel about love, definitely listen to that album because a lot of that album is things that I personally experienced with love. And it also you know, embodies like a lot of my thoughts about love and like stuff like that. Like that's what Quabs made the album about. He made it about love being a good thing and a bad thing. And like, he kind of questions like, why do we fight for it? Why do we like have such an attachment to something that could also hurt us? Like, I just love his, I just love how he just goes deep into that topic of love. Cause everybody always talk about love. Everybody like gives their opinions on it, but nobody really does like a full dissection of it. Like it as a feeling it as a, a sensation it as something that can cause drama like that's what i love about his album love and war so if you haven't listened to it once again go listen number 10 we have jupiter's diary um from rod wave that was just like a little ep that he dropped like at the very end of december so of course i was listening to it a lot at that point number nine drake's for all the dogs I can't believe it's actually up that high. I don't even remember playing it 79 times. You know, I got a question. With And if anybody knows this, then you guys can explain it to me. But when you listen to these albums on Apple Music, do it count like you listening to a specific song or they're like how many times you listen to a specific song and then it correlates to you listening to that album? Or does this actually take into account to you listening to the album? Could be told, I don't even think I listened to the album like that much. I feel like I only listened to like the full project like probably six or seven times. But 79 is kind of wild to me. Like I don't remember listening to it that much. And same with the number eight pick, Beautiful Mind. If you ask me, that's Rod Wave's, like, that's my least favorite album, well, least favorite project altogether from Rod Wave. Not that it was a bad project, but it's, like, it was my least favorite. And how I got to 110 plays, I don't know. So there's got to be somewhat accounting to how many times you listen to a song from that album because I did not listen to Beautiful Mind not once all through this year. I like other Rod Wave albums. I do listen to other Rod Wave projects, you know, all the way through. But Beautiful Mind was not one of them. Um, Seven, Hunger Games 3. Once again, I didn't listen to this all the way through, but I did listen to a lot of songs from this. I do love a lot of the songs on here, so that makes sense. Soulfly is another one that I have. That's probably the second to last favorite from his discography for me. So how that's number six with 177 plays, very questionable. But top five, at number five, we have PTSD, which makes a lot of sense because that is one I still go back to listen to all the way through. And it's probably my third favorite Rod Wave project out of all his projects. Um... 
I forgot I still have my notifications on. Number four, I have Pray for Love from Rod Wave, which is another one I didn't listen to all the way through, but I did listen to a lot of songs from there, so that's probably why it's up there. Uh, number three, we have Ghetto Gospel from Rod Wave, which, you know, that's probably my favorite album from Rod Wave. Like, out of every project he ever dropped, that is still my favorite, so that's no surprise that that's number three. Number two, we have Electric Dusk, which... I mean, y'all already know why. I love that album. It was a really good album. And then at number one, we have Nostalgia from Rod Wave, which Nostalgia, the only reason that it's number one over, um, or I should say this, the only reason that it's over Ghetto Gospel, despite me saying Ghetto Gospel is my favorite Rod Wave project, only reason Nostalgia is number one is because that's newer. So like I'm replaying that one more because it's newer. But in the grand scheme of things, if you ask me what's my favorite Rod Wave project, it's Ghetto Gospel. But yeah, it's funny. The only, I only had three 2023 albums on this list like that's kind of crazy i thought tech the album would have showed up somewhere but i guess not wow okay so there goes all my replays for the for the year and i guess before i get off here i'm gonna give my quick thoughts on how did i feel about music this year if you ask me there's been a lot of like conversation discourse about how music just kind of ain't hitting the same as it used to back in the day especially in the rap scene and I kind of talked about this slightly over the summer how like rap music I'm really not into it no more a lot of people thought I was like bullshitting or that I was bluffing when I said like you know and this was around the time before PMB Rock got killed I forget what rapper got killed before that but I even told my friends, I was like, bro, like, if another rapper, like, fucking dies, I'm really, like, done with rap music. I'm I'm really, for real, like, done. I'm tired of seeing, like, I'm tired of, like, posting RIP to, like, all these artists that I really do love their music. And then, how is it that once I said that, not much long after fucking P&B Rock, an artist that, that I loved a lot... And that if you've seen my episode after he died, y'all know my feelings about that. How is it that one of the artists that I really advocated for back in high school that grew up basically close to where I'm from dies? And I was just like, yo, at this point, I'm done. I'm done. And I think my replay kind of showed that, yeah, I kind of stayed true to my word, even though I didn't actively try to like give up hip hop. I just given up hip hop like I given up rap like I don't know what it is. Rap music. Well, I do know what it is when it comes to the females. I don't get no bars. I only get I can pop my uh, or I'm, I'm doing this with this man and that man and stuff like that. When it comes to the guys, I just I just put your boy in a blunt. I'm going to kill you. Like it's, it's stuff like that, that makes, and it's crazy. Cause I said this before earlier this year, I used to defend hip hop when people used to say that it, all it's about is money, hoes and clothes and killing people and selling drugs. Like I used to defend rap and I used to like argue with naysayers and point them to like positive artists and don't get me wrong don't get me wrong with the way that the internet has affected the music industry there are definitely hip-hop artists that do still spread positive messages and stuff like that but there is no denying that when you hit mainstream because back in the day i used to argue when the mainstream was more mixed with the gangster rappers and the more positive rappers but nowadays if you're positive you're literally considered corny or people don't like your music how is it that i know kendrick dropped his album last year but how is it that kendrick dropped a very introspective album like mr morale and the big steppers where he basically analyzed many stuff of his many things in his life he basically was like keeping it transparent with his fans like i'm not the great person that you really think that i am like he was touching on so many important things how how your parents raise you can affect how you become as a person how your family's lives can shape who you are as a person how 
you know, he confronts how he treated his partner. He confronts how the world sees him as a prophet. But really, when he's when he's himself, he he somewhat says that he kind of ain't shit. Like my thing is he made a very introspective album that makes people think about who you are as a person, because even when I listen to that album, I still listen to it today. I was like, yo, this album really does make me think about me as a person and make me want to better myself. J. Cole, his last album, The Off Season, was basically very basketball themed, but a lot of the themes basically came with, you know, stay on your goals, like be like spread love and positivity and like try to always achieve your best at whatever dream you want to achieve. And people was clowning these dudes people be clowning these dudes saying that their music is boring and not that good but then they'll still listen to King Von and and G Herbo and don't get me wrong I love King Von's music I mean anybody that personally knows me they know I love King Von's music so don't take this as like a diss or something and I love G Herbo's music so don't take this as like no diss but how many times can you listen to somebody say I'm gonna kill this person I'm gonna put them in a blunt like it's the same fucking shit it's the same fucking shit. So, I mean, sorry for my language, but it's like rap really is dead. I, I'm sorry. I never thought I would say those words. But as far as 2023 stands now, hey, you never know where the future could hold. 2024 could breathe new life into rap music. But as far as this year, it was it was dead. It was dead. I was I was not. I was really not. T tapped into rap music this year what really stole the show for me was r&b r&b has really been it for me and don't get me wrong though because rod wave is my number one artist and they consider him rap but truth be told i really consider him more r&b like he's more of, he sings more than he raps he, he'll put like a little verse here and there but he really sings more than anything else but yeah like R&B really has stole the show, but don't get it wrong though. There is other genres and like other artists that I typically like that. I felt like dropped the ball this year. Like a lot of people saw this as a joke in 2021 when she first made her first album, but Olivia Rodrigo was somebody who, when she dropped her first album in 2021, I loved the album. Surprisingly, like I didn't think I was actually going to like it, but I actually loved the album a lot. There's, I sometimes still go back to listen to the album, but when I started listening to her new album, it kind of, it kind of had this NBA young boy problem. I'm like, this doesn't feel that much different from your first. It still kind of feels like you're the same artist. I don't feel any evolving. I don't feel nothing different. So I would say my overall problem and my overall thought of this year, as far as music, is besides R&B and stuff like that, this this year has not really been the greatest for music. Not too many, like, and even the big names that did drop. To be honest, I wasn't in no rush to listen to Travis Scott. And even, look, if anything, I felt like if people said Utopia was trash, I would have actually been more into a rush to go listen to it. But, I mean, it's Travis Scott. Most people are going to love it. So, like, I'll just get to it when I get to it. For all the dogs, it was good, but it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. Rod Wave served, but I mean, I'm not trying to be biased here, but Rod Wave served for me. And then, you know, um, Leon Thomas, he's more of a newer artist or not really a new artist, but like he just started making moves himself. And, you know, he's, he did good for, he did great for his first project. So, I'll say this besides new people and people that are always solid to me. So I might be a little biased there. Just being real this year just wasn't really that anything special rap pop. Shoot. I, I listen to country, a little bit of country. Like, you know, this year just wasn't really that much anything special. So I don't know, man. I don't know if it's because I'm older and like, you know, I'm I'm like trying to grow with the artists that I've been listening to since I was in high school like that. That's definitely a possibility. 
I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's me getting older. I don't know if like, is it because the music is genuinely dropping in quality? Is it because I didn't like put in enough time to listen to music now that, you know, I'm busy with life and stuff like that. There's so many reasons why the music just probably didn't hit for me, but I don't know. The answer right now just seems to be that the music just isn't as good as it was. I I think I think the last good year that stood out for me in music wise is 2021. 2022 didn't have anything special that much for me besides Kendrick's album. What does 2023 have? I don't know. But I will say this, though. I will end this on a positive note. Like I said, I'm not the only person that's been having this conversation. So with this conversation being brought up a lot with how 2023 has been a very bad year for music and like not a lot of notable names. And it's kind of been a boring year besides, um, actually the main thing music wise, that's been really getting headlines really is the tours that's been going on this year. Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Drake, bad bunny. Like whenever they were doing shows or tours and stuff like that, like that was the main music discourse I've seen for the year. And okay, and I Spice, not her shows, but just whatever I Spice does. Like she did bring a lot of discourse. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say music was boring this year, but it was just more disappointing. So, but with all the people talking about this, and I'm definitely not a big platform. A lot of big platforms have been talking about this conversation on like how music's been going. I would say that 2024 might be in a better direction just because everybody is acknowledging the problem and next year shoot if everybody knows the problem next year the problem can be solved so that's all i'm gonna say 2024 i hope that with all this conversation about how music has kind of been stale and like how music has kind of like you know hasn't been good i hope that causes change because i don't want music to be bad like a lot of people, a lot of people feel like I have harsh, you know, thoughts and harsh, like critiques on things. But the truth is when I say these things, I'm not sitting here hoping that things stay bad. I'm really sitting here hoping that things change for the better. So 2024, I really do hope that a lot of bigger acts drop again. I hope that newer artists, you know, you know, puts out great bodies of work. I hope that we're not stuck with the same subject matter, especially in rap. Cause I love rap. Like I love it. Like I know R and B is my favorite genre, but rap is still one that I love a lot. And I want to see it grow. Like, cause how sad is it that this year was the 50th year of hip hop and not that much special stuff happened. It's the 50th year of hip hop and not much happened. So, and I don't mean like, you know, for all the OGs and stuff, like I know all the OGs taking pictures and doing shows and stuff like that. Don't lecture me in the comments about that shit. I'm talking about as far as like newer drops and stuff like that for the 50th year of hip hop, not much special shit has happened. So we just got to be real with it. Um, so yeah, man, I know basically this episode was just me doing a bunch of rambling and stuff like that, but Ultimately, I hope y'all enjoyed the episode and I hate to be these type of com content creators, but you know, make sure you like comment and subscribe, especially subscribe because you know, a lot of my analytics come from people that don't follow me and you know, I want to continue to grow. I know I've been kind of on a hiatus because of this movie, but when I'm not working on films, when I'm not working on stuff like that, I am fully going into this YouTube stuff. And, and also since the podcast is on streaming, like I am also going in on that. Like if I'm not doing films, I'm, I'm going in on anything else that I do. So yeah. Um, like I said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe to my gaming channel, Tevin Jameer Gaming. I think I might have a big announcement as far as gaming before, like by the end of this year or either early next year. Like I said, I, I think, I'm not going to say that I do, but I think just because me and some people, if you guys have been longtime fans, then you'll probably know who I'm talking about, but me and some people... I've been having conversations about stuff in the gaming realm. So 
yeah, stay tuned for that. So yeah, subscribe to Tevin Jameer. Also subscribe to my gaming channel, Blood Money on the Way. I'll give y'all more information as time goes on. But with all that being said, Tevin Jameer, signing out. Catch y'all in the next one.